What's good, crime family? Hope you're having a good day today. If not, I hope the video bring a little light to your day today, ladies and gentlemen. We're checking out our Ant Eaters OP. I'm gonna leave the original video link in the description. Y'all make sure I show us some love and check out the original video. Let's get into it. Our Ant Eaters. Oh, this is an animation. I thought it was real. What the heck? Some good animating. Ants are one of the most overpowered factions in the game. Their go wide use social strategy is essentially unbeatable, to the point where they control wide swaths of the overworld pretty much uncontested. Even the human build, the undisputed top Damn. tier in the current meta, has trouble keeping ants at bay. And with their huge variety of incredible abilities, from acidic projectiles and powerful stingers to coordinated attack strategies and terraforming abilities, I don't think it's much of a surprise that ants are such a meta-defining force. Oh my god! And yet, there's one build which can obliterate an entire colony in only a few minutes, the Ant Eater. But does having a super favorable matchup against one of the game's top tier builds actually translate into the Ant Eater being top tier itself? There's so much more- See, anytime you got an ant problem, just hire an Ant Eater. I get rid of your whole problem. I wonder how much they cost to rent. Nah, I'm just playing. But that would be dope, though. <laughs> More to the anteater build than just being able to solo an entire colony of ants with ease. So in today's video, we'll discuss all the abilities and weaknesses of the anteater build to determine... How are ants enough food for that big old thing? are only playable on the South America server in both jungle and savanna biomes. And this is not an easy server to try to carve a niche into. I know I drone on a lot about how OP African builds are, but the Amazon rainforest is home to some of the most fearsome predators in the game, I bet. including the snake build with the largest size and the field build with the most powerful bite, Ooh. among many other incredibly dangerous yeah. types. Meanwhile, the anteater's closest living relative is the sloth, a build with so many devastating flaws that I currently rate it as the mammal furthest down on the tier list. So Aww. how is it that the anteater is able to survive such a hostile metagame? Well, they may be closely related to the pathetic moss-covered slugs that Human Faith builds named one of the seven deadly sins after, but they're also related to this. Oh my gosh, I thought that anteater had two heads. That is actually insane. That is wild. Megatherium, the gigantic ground sloth that was capable of one-shotting a saber tooth. And in my opinion, anteaters take after this type of sloth. To see what I mean, let's look at their stats. There is some variation among different anteater builds, which we'll get into later in this video. But for now, we're gonna focus on the giant anteater. Pulling up the analysis, two things jump out right away. The first is their shockingly high HP stat. While they don't have any major form of armor, the anteater can still shake off a surprising Damn. amount of damage even from attacks that might horse do that? one shot most players. This is crucial as it allows the anteater a chance to survive ambushes by jaguars, which is pretty incredible given that jaguars frequently one shot crocodilians. But this is also extremely important because it provides an opportunity for the anteater's other surprisingly high stat to become relevant. That stat being their attack power. This attack power stat might look like a mistake, especially given that anteaters don't even have teeth did y'all just see how long man's teeth is? I mean, tongue is? What the heck, bro? Look at this thing. Attack power stat might look like a mistake, especially given that anteater. Oh my gosh, bro. There's no absolutely way, bro. Don't even have teeth and are completely locked out of using the move bite. However, once you get past the head and look down, you realize that at the end of their massive gorilla arms, anteaters have pickaxe-shaped claws as big as those of a grizzly bear, Damn, except no the claws. anteaters' claws are even sharper because they walk on their knuckles to avoid wearing them down. Really? These incredible weapons are what allow the anteater to tear through the cement-like walls of termite mounds with ease. But they come with the nice side benefit of being able to absolutely eviscerate any player who fails to kill them in one hit. Their slashes can easily deal lethal damage, so any predator looking to ambush an anteater needs to make sure they have what it takes to finish the job before the anteater can counterattack. And this threat alone is often enough to dissuade attacks in the first place. While the anteater's match with the boy. Jaguar is of course important, it wouldn't be fair to the anteater player base if I didn't comment on their matchup versus you social insect. Imagine calls. getting scratched the by that long claw. The long tongue is covered in a glue-like substance and can flick in and out over 150 times per minute, which can take out dozens of insects per flick and decimate a colony in no time. However, similar to their sloth brethren, anteaters opted for a slower metabolism. 
This comes with downsides, which we'll cover later, but it does mean that they don't need to consume an entire colony of ants, and can actually leave the colony in a damaged but recoverable state. This is a highly sustainable method of farming XP, because it ensures that the anteater player can simply return to the same termite mound or anthill later on, tear into it again, and the colony will have replenished its supply of workers enough that they can just do the same thing again. It also means the anteater does- That's genius. I'm not gonna hold you. That is genius. That is unlimited food plug. Like, it's a glitch in the matrix type ish, bruh. Oh my goodness, unlimited food. Letting them live so they can rebuild their colony and have more of them just to come back to eat more. My goodness, that is cruel and unusual to the bugs, but good for him. <laughs> Doesn't consume yet any one colony for very long, which is good because despite how powerful their offensive tools are at destroying a colony of insects, Ant eaters don't actually have any unique defensive abilities to avoid the damage from a swarm of militant insects they've just provoked, and have to rely solely on their HP to soak up the damage. Of course, as mentioned prior, because of their high HP stat, ant eaters are well equipped to tank a lot of hits. But the acid attacks launched by termites and ants certainly aren't something they can just ignore for extended durations. The rest of the anteater stats are fairly lackluster. Anteaters aren't as sluggish as sloths, but because of their slow metabolism, they do have a below average movement speed. Given that they've specked into massive claws on their forelimbs, rather- Bro, I don't understand how an animal that big can only survive off of eating termites and ants. Like, that's kind of wild when you really think about it. Than more mobility favoring options like paws or hooves, I don't think this low speed is too surprising. It's a worthy trade-off, in my opinion. Kind of like a skunk. Their is also middle of the road. They don't stick out as bad as some builds, but aren't the best camouflaged either. The anteater can hide under its bushy tail, disguising itself as a bush while also That's shielding fire. itself from the cold. But as far as plant-style disguises go, there are certainly more impressive displays out there. The anteater's intelligence isn't great either. They'd form quite a formidable- He did not just let that anteater put his- Tongue in his mouth, bro. There's absolutely no way that just happened. Will force in groups, yet rarely engage in team strategies, if ever. Their last main weakness is their poor eyesight. It's a good thing they don't go down in one hit, because the tiny eyes on the sides of their heads do not give them the best odds at detecting an ambush before the attacker is within striking range. Next, let's delve into some of the individual variants of the Anteater. The giant Anteater is by far the most powerful, at the cost of its mobility. The giant anteater is the only variant that lacks Jeez, the ability that thing is to big. trees. Despite their claws being phenomenal for hooking into trees, giant anteaters simply are too cumbersome to venture into the canopy. There are two other variants of the anteater build, and both variants are much better at climbing. First is the Tamandua. This mid-sized anteater sports a slightly lower base power and hit point stat than the giant anteater, but in exchange it has unlocked a powerful new ability, a prehensile tail. Yeah. This perk allows the user to use its tail essentially as a fifth appendage, oh, it's like a monkey. additional resistance to being knocked down while browsing high up in the treetops. Because of its lower HP stat, this build can't tank acid damage as well as the giant anteater, and so it needs to avoid high tier ant builds like the leafcutter ant. The final variant is the pygmy anteater, a nocturnal what? that invests more into itself than other stats, drastically cutting its bulk and damage in turn. In my opinion, the pygmy anteater is a bit too similar to the sloth build for me to consider it competitively viable. It's adorable in an ant eat away, I guess. <laughs> but to each their own. Although the ability to climb does come in handy for escaping predators, like a teddy bear. the giant anteater doesn't seem to miss it much. While the other variants need to worry about attacks from eagles, the Damn. giant anteater's bulk is enough to protect it from most threats. I like how as soon as they get attacked, they be like, watch out, homie. Watch out. You don't want no problems. <laughs> Its matchup versus the Jaguar is still pretty risky, but it's better than most. So I'm going to give the Giant Anteater a rating of A tier, while the Tamandua gets a rank of B tier, okay. and the Pygmy Anteater gets a D tier rank. Should have got an F tier. One of the most effective ways to lock in a high placement on the tier list is to have high base stats. And while most stats require millions of years of evolution to change, intelligence is one Humans. of the few stats which can be leveled up, provided you are the right sort of training. In today's meta, abilities like coding and mathematics are extremely useful. They're tough to learn. So I wonder how long it's gonna be until like monkeys like start talking. Like I actually feel like that's gonna happen one day. I'm not sure when, but I feel like learn unless you got a really effective course designed to intuitively guide you through difficult concepts. That's precisely where today's sponsor, Brilliant, comes in. 
Brilliant is an online learning platform which uses fun, interactive courses to help you level up those science and engineering skills. That's dope. I don't know about you, but the way I've learned best. That's is actually dope. I, I literally just seen a Twitter video of like somebody with like their half of their arm was cut off, but they could move the robot hand. That's why I, I do love like the evolution of technology because it's just like I feel like in the future it's going to help a lot of people, especially like people who may have lost an arm or lost a leg and, and the leg still, you know, them being able to make a, a, a robot leg for them so they can walk again. Like, I think that's going to be dope, man. I feel like it's going to, it's going to change everything. Low pressure bro. environment where I'm free to make as many mistakes as I want. It's how I learned video editing. It's how I learned 3D animation. And now, thanks to Brilliant, it's also how I'm learning coding and data science. Instead of spending huge amounts of money and getting slapped with disheartening grades every time you struggle to nail something on the first try, you can go at your own pace and see helpful explanations whenever you need. If this sounds good to you, you can try Brilliant completely free for 30 days. But don't worry, Brilliant. you don't need to speed run the entire library in just a month to save money. Because the first two Not speed you run the library. Get 20% off the annual membership. Wait, so that's brilliant.org slash tearsu. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring and thank you for watching. Yo, shout out to Tier Zoo. They only put out good content and give out a lot of information on things that you didn't know, but you want to know, but you didn't know you wanted to know, but now you know. <laughs> Hopefully, you enjoyed my reaction video, man. Y'all make sure I go show Tier Zoo some love by watching the original video. Link will be in the description. Thank y'all so much for watching. Until next time, deuces.